All right, so let's finish up the Reanimator franchise with Beyond Reanimator. This was a first time watch for me. Um, I thought I'd seen some of it, but I think I made that up. I don't think I've seen any of this fucking movie. I knew it was on death row. Um, I'm looking at the back right now and I'm not recognizing one of these characters. Huh. Interesting. There's a director's commentary on this disc with Brian Yuzna. So Brian Re Yuzna returns who directed Bride of Reanimator. And I was hoping that I was going to get a little bit more of the insanity that is Bride of Reanimator. You know, Yuzna kind of likes to have these climatic sequences with lots of wild imagery, much like he did in Society or Return of the Living Dead 3 or something, or Bride of Reanimator from the same franchise. Now, the Bride of the Re Bride of Reanimator movie came out in 1990 for a $2 million budget, and this one was 2003 with a $3 million budget. Now, I know with inflation, that's kind of probably equal-ish. Um, but this film feels much cheaper. Much cheaper. So, I'm not really sure what they did with the $3 million. Honestly, I don't know if they spent like 1.5 of that on Jeffrey Combs. But this one's not of the quality of the other two. That's for sure. That being said, I still did find it to be entertaining enough that I'm not hating on the fact that it exists in this franchise. It's not like a creep show 3 or something that's an absolute fucking abomination to a franchise that shouldn't even exist. Or in like an Omen 4 The Awakening or a hundred of the Amityville movies or uh, Hellraiser Hellworld or there's just... Every franchise seems to have its dud later on. Even fucking a franchise I don't even like that much, or almost at all, the I Know What You Did Last Summer franchise. Like, the first one is... Uh, and the second one's okay. And that third one... I have to use three fingers for the third one. Uh, is... Yeah, this is a word I like to use the most with these kinds of films an abomination because that's what it feels like to me it's like the perfect word to describe movies like that this film on the other hand isn't an abomination it's just you know it's a it's a decline in the quality and I, you know that's okay that's okay I, ideally it would be amazing of course that's what we always want we want it to be a great time in this and that I didn't I definitely didn't dislike the movie but I definitely did not love the movie by any means. So, um, yeah. Now you can once again thank Kaylee for getting me to watch this one. This is a franchise that I've needed to finish. I did the first reanimator about a year and four months or something ago. And I should have done these by now. So I appreciate Kaylee picking these. And I also appreciate Kaylee watching these with me. So thank you to her. Let's get into this film. So as I said, it's a Brian Yesna film. And the FX on the on the zombie in the opening with his jaw ripped off and his tongue hanging out of his mouth kind of looks like something out of like Return of the Living Dead. It's really good. That was awesome. And you know, Kaylee and myself both were like instantly like, "Oh shit, like is this going to be the effects for the film? Like is this setting that tone?" No, unfortunately not. Uh, if there was more of that in this movie, I'd be much higher on it. Much, much higher on it. If there was more inventive, more memorable looking... Um, I, I guess they're zombies. I mean, at the end of the day, I guess these are zombie movies, but they just don't feel like zombies to me. You know, what they are, I don't know. They're reanimated corpses i mean that's what a zombie is right but for these just they feel different i mean once they can talk but return of the living dead those are zombies and they can talk i don't know there's something about these that just feels different and maybe it's just the tone of the first two films that makes it different 
and within this one, this feels like something that could come, almost come out of. I, you know what I guess it is? Is that in this, I don't feel like the bites are as prevalent to the turning of other people into them. Not saying that doesn't have some effect. It does, but it's not as focused upon as it is in most zombie movies. Most zombie movies, it's all they focus very heavily on. If you get bit, you're turning, your life's over. That doesn't happen in these movies as much. This movie's more about like people who have been injected and they're kind of the zombies of the film. So it's more of like... Um, it's more of like a self... Or a, a contained zombie uh, experience. As opposed to, you know, the outbreak. The magnitude of the, of the zombie outbreak. It's always, you know, it's going to get out in the world. I don't feel like when I'm watching these movies, I don't feel like the virus is going to spread and it's going to go global and take over. I feel like it's always going to be confined to that area and the people that come into that area. I don't feel like it's ever going anywhere. Um, so now at the end of Reanimator and Br and Bride of Reanimator, they both they leave both sequences open at the end to make you wonder Herbert West's fate. Um, this one has a very clear-cut answer. He escapes the prison and he's alive, 100%. He's out and free, man, the whole works, right? So in this one, they're very clear-cut on, on him, um, which is kind of funny because the other two movies are the movies that got sequels. So even though the endings were ambiguous and open-ended, we got answers. And in this one, this is the one where it could have been left off that maybe he died, maybe he didn't, and because we never got another one with him, we'll never know. But in these others two, we do get to know because they made sequels to them. So I find it ironic that this is the one that has the clearest cut ending, and of all three of them that should have that ambiguous who knows ending, should be this one because it has no sequel. So, I don't know. Uh, I thought that that was interesting. Um, so this kid sees his sister killed in the opening. Good luck mentally recovering from that. We flash forward 13 years after this kid has found the reagent and was attacked by one of Herbert West's creations. And now this kid has grown up in 13 years and become a doctor that is transferred to a prison how old is the kid in the beginning of this movie? He's probably... 12 to 14. So he's 25 to 27 in this movie. Once the 13 years passes. The guy that we see in this movie... Um, seems a little old for that, but that's typical. And it's insane that he was able to graduate and, you know, go to medical school, do his residency, and then be transferred to a prison. I, I just feel like he did that real quick. But he was determined because he wanted to bring his sister back. And not only that, but he got transferred to the prison that Dr. Herbert West was in. And he also got to so easily say that he needed him as part of the staff. So that... We had he had to bank on the fact that this uh, the, this prison was going to be understaffed and that they were going to allow a prisoner to actually do medicine after his license would have been revoked and they'd probably get in trouble for this. But he's going to act as his assistant doctor, which I just yeah I mean when you're in prison as a doctor you're not really a doctor anymore. You know, desperate times. Somebody just pointed out. Who was it? Somebody in the last review was like, oh man, you almost got through this review without yawning. And like, now that's fucking with my head. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get, now I have to, right? Lately, I've just been so tired at night. <laughs> Fuck! And I'm so early into the review, there's probably a couple more coming. How annoying. Um, so yeah, I, I like this idea that 
Herbert has been arrested. He's in prison. He hasn't gotten to practice his reagent and his medicine in a while. And he then gets to start working on patients again. Now, what I think would have been more interesting, and I think that the way the film should have went instead, is I think that he shouldn't have not have been arrested. He should not have been a prisoner in the in the film. I think that, and it's fine that he is. I'm not saying. I'm just saying if I was to do it, and I'm making this shit up off the top of my head right now, because <laughs> that's always what I do. But writing the film right now on the spot, I think it would be more interesting if Herbert got a job at the at the hospital or at the prison as the medical, you know. Um, professional there as the doctor and then he was working in a maximum security prison with you know, death row inmates and when they execute people or when inmates kill each other they're put down in the morgue and he goes and he starts experimenting on their bodies you know then some of them start like walking around and then they're found and they're put back in their cells and then this starts a big giant outbreak it's not so different than this version um i just would have liked him to kind of have more free reign i don't feel like him being a prisoner in this really helps very much it doesn't you know honestly the film would be so similar i just think personally that would have been more interesting and i think the reason i feel like this is because the other doctor that comes into the movie is so like non-interesting to me that I don't really feel like his existence needs to be there that they could have cut him out and then maybe focused more on like the warden and maybe you know a prisoner and uh, a guard and stuff like that that he could have had more interactions with and maybe he even got himself you know a, the nurse you know in this or something and they could have had some kind of bit of a dynamic um, I don't know I just this main character ish guy, this doctor guy, he doesn't do anything for me really. I don't think he's terrible. I just don't care for him very much. It's kind of just very blah to me. It's very, you know, forgettable. Uh, he he's no Dan from the first two for sure. But we do find out that Dan went state evidence, states evidence on Herbert West, and that is why he's in prison. I don't hate that he's in prison. I, you know, I'm I don't know. I just feel like there's tweaks and changes that could be made to better this film. And the biggest one by far would have been the extravaganza of an ending with just craziness and all sorts of uh, reanimated corpses and, and uh, you know, imaginative, wild-looking creatures and stuff that, that maybe he had been creating. Uh, stuff like that and this film just doesn't feature those kinds of things and that's a shame for this franchise because that's very much what this franchise is going for and that's how the other two ended and I feel like with this being the third film this having the highest budget then it should have been complete insanity at the end and with the director of the second one coming back I just would expect that from him as well so that was kind of annoying um, now the journalist that comes into the prison who shows the most side boob a human's ever shown in a movie without showing nipple although she does show a very a fraction of her nipple in one moment when when they're like rolling around so we do kind of get to see her tits but it's seriously like there's so much tit exposed from the side and he's pressing on it and everything and i'm just like i feel like i'm seeing her entire tit right now but there's just no nipple to be found so um, there is a pair of tits in the movie, though. There's the the nurse who, in this movie, works in a maximum security death row prison. She wears low-cut, unbuttoned scrubs, or nurse outfit, whatever the hell you call that thing. Her bra is exposed, her cleavage is hanging out, she can see right through the fucking outfit to her panties. She's wearing, like, stockings with, like, garters and everything once her clothes are ripped off. Is this girl, like, trying to get herself raped? I just don't see the prison hiring somebody like that. And I also don't see them hiring somebody like that and then not telling her, like, hey, 
maybe put your tits away around a bunch of criminals who are on death row and want to fuck anything that would move. Like, what? This outfit and everything. When she turned around, she walked away, and we could literally see through her shit, and you could see her panties. I was like, come on. <laughs> come on. That's absurd. Uh, the music in this, just like I've said before, but the worst of the three by far when it comes to how bad this is ripping off Psycho. The scene where Marion is driving and she's like playing all those voices in her head in Psycho and that that song is fucking beat for beat recovered in this film. Beat for beat. It's ridiculous. This is Vanilla Ice fucking ripping off Queen under pressure all over again. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, and if you haven't seen Vanilla Ice trying to argue that the beat that the beat is different for his song than it is for Under Pressure, you are missing out on pure comedy gold. Do yourself a favor. It's amazing. So anyway, um, the chick in this, the blonde who shows way too much side boob and not enough nipple. She drives a red convertible Volkswagen Rabbit, which was like the chick car of chick cars in the late 80s. And then I want to say from there it went from the jet... Because like, I felt like every babe in California, when I was a kid growing up, they just switched models of VWs like from era to era. It was the Volkswagen Rabbit, which was like the cutest fucking thing a chick drove back then. Convertible top, you know. Um, which is, I think it was what Mercedes Lane drives at the... Yeah, it's the what Mercedes Lane drives at the end of License to Drive. And uh, Les Anderson jumps in the front seat with her and, and drives off pretty sure yeah I'm, I'm almost positive anyways but then it went from that to the Jetta to the newer Volkswagen bug like that was like the era of like every fucking hot chick I saw had one of those cars so it was cool to see this babe in a fucking VW rabbit except for I feel like this was during the VW bug age so she, she was like behind on the times so well whatever um, anybody ever else noticed that? Anybody else ever noticed the VW thing? Am I completely alone on this? Maybe I missed the generation before that where all the hot chicks were driving VW buses. Um, in uh, that... Um, what was that movie? Uh, the delivery movie the um, with Paul Rudd. Isn't she driving a Volkswagen thing in that movie? That's who makes that car, right? The thing? That was a Volkswagen, right? She's driving that. Unexpected delivery. No. Something like that. Fuck is that movie? Where she sends out the the message to her boyfriend she wants to break up and then she decides to change her mind and so she like goes and tries to track down that package. Anyway. Or that note. Um Yeah, I can't believe I can't remember the name of that movie. I haven't seen it forever, but I swear she drives one in that movie. That's completely irrelevant. As usual. Um, yeah, so the guy in this movie, the, the doctor here, totally seems to have some weird kink for his sister. This is just like, uh, you know, um, it's it was so obviously weird in this. Like, Kaylee and I both like instantly text each other, like, this guy wants to fuck his sister. What is going on here? So, um... The girl's name is Laura, but he's t he's talking about his sister Emily, who's killed in the beginning, and he's like, you know, stroking her face, like you look like my sister. And then at the end of the movie, he's like seeing her. He's like Laura or, or Emily, yeah, Emily, and he's looking at Laura. This dude, like, this is, he's, like, making moves on this chick and telling her, like, you remind me of my sister. If a guy, like, starts fondling your face and is, like, 
you remind me of my sister and then tries to go in for a kiss? Would you be into it? I mean, if that's your thing, it's your thing. I mean, step stepbrother and stepsister porn is like the number one fucking searched thing these days. So maybe you would be in. I don't know. I don't judge. Not too much anyway. Um, now, <laughs> like when he has to like almost ask her permission for the kiss, he says, Se seize the moment. She's like, go for it. Uh, which he tells her to go for it. This is why she goes in and tries to interview this um, prisoner after having, uh, you know, cock tease the warden, which pisses him right the fuck off. But then at the end of the movie, there's a callback to that when he's, when the doctor is going to kill her and she tells him, go for it. So that go for it line plays a couple times in this movie. Uh, and the, I love how the prison in this movie is literally on like a major street in the middle of a city. Like, it's, like, right there. Right in the middle of downtown, wherever the hell they are. Well, they're supposed to be in the uh, Arkham, Massachusetts. She says she's from the, from the Arkham whatever. So I guess in Arkham, Massachusetts, there is a death row prison right on, right on the street next to, like, it's right in the middle of a city. I just... How many prisons are there like that out there? I, I don't know of many, but let me know. Um, and I already talked about all of that. So then we are introduced to nanoplasm. So nano, nanoplasm is a, like, is a new thing in this franchise where uh, Herbert West has been trying to perfect his reagent throughout both films and he's failed and he continues to keep failing in the same way. So in this one, he is able to use his reagent and he's, he's able to stabilize this to a degree with this nanoplasma plasm. Um, and I like this addition. I think this makes sense. I like that he's perfecting his, cure for death. I like that he's had 13 years in prison to think about this and once given the opportunity he has new answers. He's going to try something new and basically he's taking like the soul or the essence of somebody and he's putting it into like this little light bulb and then after somebody's been turned you know he hooks it up to this person but they seem to take on that person or that animal's traits in addition to their own so there's like a shared dueling consciousness kind of thing going on here, which is cool. I like this. I like this in addition. I, I think this is interesting. I think it's unique. I think it's what makes the film stand out. Whoa, I just kicked my camera. How was that for everybody? Did you like going on a ride? Jesus Christ. That was... Somebody's probably watching this and is like, going to throw up after that one. But I do. I like that addition. I think that's neat. Um... Yeah, I. Yeah, because it just adds a whole new flavor to it. Like once the the shared consciousnesses and all that start happening, and uh, she gets the warden's consciousness, and so she's kind of half herself, half the warden, or maybe a third herself, third the warden, and third a reanimated fucking body. Um, so she's kind of acting like a zombie, kind of acting like herself, and kind of acting like the warden. And the warden himself is himself, the reanimated body, and then a rat. So he puts the rat into him, and then the and then the warden gets like buck teeth. So he like has the appearance of a rat, and then he's like crawling around like a rat as well. So um, why he would physically change, but she starts to physically change too. Her face and everything starts to reconstruct, and then her hands go like all backwards, fingers and shit, and that's actually a really cool effect, so I dug that. Uh, security in this prison is a joke. Uh, they might want to start hiring better guards. Um, and the warden in this movie fucking kills the reporter because she's she saw him uh, beating a prisoner to death who bit his fucking ear off. Let me tell you what. If you bite the warden's ear off, you're going to die. You're going to die. And no one's going to question it. So, 
he could have just told her, look, everyone's going to believe what I have to say on this. And she'd be like, yeah. And she even told him, like, I'm, I'll am i cover for you, this and that. And he couldn't handle that, so he killed her. And plus, he just, like, he wanted her. And she kind of, she lied to him. And she kind of promised him something that he thought he was getting and he was never getting. <laughs> you'll never get this. You'll never get this. He get this. Um, and then, yeah, then we get the zombie warden who's rat face. Um, almost looks like Peter Pettigrew when he comes out in Prisoner of Azkaban when, you know, Sirius turns... Or no, I think Lupin grabs... The, no, it's Sirius. No, Sirius is the one that turns him. Nobody cares but me. That's fine. Um, but he, yeah, he has that total appearance like Peter Pettigrew. Um, and then the junkie scene is probably my favorite scene of the film. Uh, the junkie starts shooting up and this guy has like the weirdest accent. He's like white as fuck, but he has this like, he's this very like, I don't know, Spanish? Mexican? I have no clue what this fucking accent's supposed to be. Um, but he is Mr. I want to take every drug on earth. And so he shoots himself up with the reagent. And this is actually one of my favorite scenes for a lot of reasons. And one of them being... Um, how funny I think it is, how ridiculous this character is, the fact that his body explodes. But one thing I really like about it is that uh, Herbert's standing there, and the guy takes the reagent, and he's like, no, no, you don't want to do that. And the guy shoots himself up, and instead of Herbert yelling out like, no, what are you doing? You're going to kill yourself. Herbert doesn't give a fuck about human life. He clearly has no qualms, you know, uh, killing people, taking and bringing them back, whatever, for his own for his own work it's all a big vanity project he wants to get this solved at the end of the day he doesn't care who it saves he doesn't care who it hurts he just is this mad scientist that wants to figure out his shit so anyway when the guy immediately ejects it up ejects it herbert has a fucking mag light in his hand and he like he raises it and he starts just watching the guy and observing and i love that i love that it's just very it's it's a scientist it's a doctor it's a okay this guy did it let me just kind of see what happens i'll take some fucking notes you know noted if you shoot up a ton of this while alive your body explodes but then after all that the guy comes and he's like nothing but like flesh and fucking like bone like he's got like little bits he is a dead body no skin everything's falling off of him and he gets up and he grabs you know, at Herbert, and he's like, you know, you got any more? He wants more drugs. The guy wants more drugs. He's nothing but, like, just, like, fucking ground beef stuck to skeleton bones. And he's asking for more drugs. And and Herbert's response is, I think you've had enough. That is amazing. That kind of comedy, that kind of scene... 50 more of those, please, or 10 more even, and this movie would have been much, much better. God, that was so funny when it was, like, just a dead body being, like, I want some... But it wasn't even just a dead body. It was, like, a mutilated dead body asking for more drugs. Hilarious. Um, then the uh, reporter chick, she ends up biting the warden's dick off because he makes her not only bark like a dog, um, but also... He makes her blow him, and so she takes him in her mouth, bites his dick off, spits it across the room, and then the reanimated rat in the movie, who, it's it's kind of a part of the movie, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, the red-eyed rat, he starts biting on and gnawing at this guy's dick. And you think, like, that's just all that's going to be? But no, during the credit sequence... The dick, having been bitten by the rat, comes to life and starts fighting the rat. The dick comes up and starts, they start like totally fighting. And you see a lot of this in shadow on the wall. And then the rat retreats and the penis follows behind. And then credits and we hear the rat squeal out. So I guess the dick, what, wrapped itself around the rat's neck. I'm not really sure how the penis could kill the rat, but this film features a rat versus killer penis okay that happens in this film during the credits 
That's the kind of shit I needed for the last 30 minutes of this movie. The the tongue fucking zombie, you know, the dude coming up overdosed and asking for more drugs, the rat cock fight, like that kind of stuff to me was great. And I would watch 30 more minutes of that, 40 minutes of that. It, that was great stuff. So there you go. Um, and um, the torso. There's a torso that's running around on his, on his hands. It kind of reminds me of the movie Yummy. If you didn't see that movie from last year, I want to say. Yeah, last year. This is a good zombie movie. It was on Shudder. Check it out. Anyway, there's a torso and it's running around. It's the guy with the rat. And he's like, he's just like kind of running on his hands, which is pretty impressive to begin with. But then he leaps and you think he's just going to kind of like go down to the stairs and run. Oh no, this fucking thing flies. There's a flying torso that goes all the way across the room by one push off. That guy has been working out. Although, to be fair, with how much I fucking weigh, and I do push ups all the time, if you were to cut off like 80% of my body and then made me do push ups with all that weight off, I probably could launch myself that far. Ridiculous. Speaking speaking of fucking Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and Professor Lupin, like I was just talking about fucking a minute ago, or well, I mistook serious for Pre uh, Lupin. Nobody cares. All I'm saying is the fucking res the spell ridiculous, ridiculous. Anybody a Harry Potter fan here? Anybody? All right, I'm probably alone. That's okay. Me and like. I got a lot of kids who agree with me. If you guys don't, I don't care. We get to see the tits on the nurse and then her nipples bit off. You don't... Breasts are sacred, okay? Okay, you can kill kids in movies. You can do anything you want. But you leave them titties alone. You leave them titties alone. You can kill the chick. Just leave her titties intact. It's all I ask. It's all I ask. Um, there's a fight with a half a torso. I think the half the torso effects look pretty good. So I was impressed by those. Um, and then, let's see, um, yeah, I mean, then there's kind of the showdown between Laura and the warden and, and, and that, and then, uh, Herbert West comes in and he executes the warden and electrocutes him. And then, uh, our, our main doctor here, whatever the fuck his name was. Oh, I know what his name was. It was, um. Howie, because his, his name in the movie is Howard Phillips, named after H.P. Lovecraft. Shit, I know what his fucking name is. Anyway, Howie uh, is asked by Laura to kill her, and he so obliges, sort of, because she's a severed head who's now alive, and he sees her as his sister Emily, even though they had a romantic thing going on already in this movie. This guy wants to fuck his sister. Confirmed. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's it. So, overall, it's fine. I mean, there's, there's the, there's the first guy that they bring back. I don't really find him to be all that interesting. He's kind of like this, like, I don't know, kind of mentally ill, um, like, Jesus freak. I don't know what the hell this guy is. And then there's the guy with the rat who becomes the torso. And then there's the guard who gets like his, his nose bit off. Anytime I say guard, I always think of Team America World Police when, when uh, I think it's, is it Matt Damon? There's a couple people when they're just like, it's some celebrities being parodied. But there's, yeah, we're guards. Yeah, we're guards. 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 We're guards. I, mean, I can't say the word guards without fucking thinking of that always say that in my head guards we're guards i don't know um overall it's okay overall it's okay i mean i think there's gonna be a lot of people who just hate it and think it's trash and it shouldn't belong in the franchise and i could understand that to a degree but i just don't think it's as bad as maybe some people would think it's not a terrible entry it's just not a very good one um i'm not gonna go into a harry potter rant again it's not a very good spell is it uh, I did it anyway. Fuck it. All right, I'm done. Adios.